Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is a brand new build for the Ascending Tide DLC. This is a necromancer called the Cultist and it's a hybrid build. A mixture between magicka and stamina skills and weapon types, both physical and magic. And of course, we are going to be able to manage our resources much better using both pools, meaning that regardless of the situation, you should always have enough resources left over to block, dodge, CC break and all that good stuff. Most stamina builds struggle with that because they're going to use the same bar for everything. Most magical builds struggle with it because you don't have a big enough stam bar. We've got a really good balance of everything. So first of all, we're going to go into the stats. We did just pop a potion there, you didn't hear it. So we have 13k magicka, 26.6k max health, and 30, almost 32k max stamina. Recovery across the board is pretty good. 900 odd stamina and 650-ish on magicka recovery. That is relevant, but just bear in mind we're going to be able to balance our resources very, very easy with passive bonuses and the way that we're set up. 5k weapon damage almost, but if you get buffs and bonuses from your group, especially if you're hitting the dummy and you've got your weapon glyph from the back bar running, will actually be around sort of the 7k mark. And our crit chance is almost 60%, but with uh, buffs and bonuses from your group, that will actually hit 60 anyway. Pen is quite good, especially considering we're going to get buffs and bonuses from maybe a taunt with minor and major breach, even Alquash in a room. You start stacking those bonuses, we're capped easily. And of course, our resistances are fairly low, but that's because we don't have a resistance buff on at the moment. If you bring one from your group, say for example, a Warden, and maybe someone throwing out Combat Prayer, you've got the combination of both Minor and Major, that will be a fairly healthy place then, and you'll be just fine. Failing that, of course, if you want to put on a resistance buff, you can, but you're going to have to sacrifice a skill to do so. 64 points into maximum stamina. We are... Scaling our abilities off of our weapon damage and stamina. So we want them as high as we can get them for this particular setup, even if we're using magical skills. And of course, we are using the Thief Mundestone for more crit. This stuff here is all irrelevant, but the food is relevant. We're using flat health and stamina food, which doesn't show you on the stats there because it's broken, but we get 5.3, almost 5.4k max health and 5k max stamina. The highest combination of health and stamina available on any food. The highest stamina available, full stop, is actually green food, but you don't get anything else with it. The combination of the two, that's the highest one. This is relevant. We're coming back to it. Don't worry. Now, we're going to go straight into the gear here, so this actually makes some sense. Then I'm going to explain the skills and how that all kind of ties in together. So we're going to go over to the armory system over here, and I'm going to sh show you one of the variations. So we're going into here first. We're actually using Venomous. So Venomous daggers on the front bar, both of these will give us a crit bonus from our passives which we'll come to later but also the set gives you two crit bonuses a weapon and spell damage bonus and if you do crit damage which you will you'll do a massive circle of poison damage which does damage every two seconds now it lasts 10 and has 15 seconds down so there's a five second gap which is absolutely fine because it can fall off when we swap bars and land when we come back to the front bar again it's damage over time so remember the target that is affected by it will get hit by this but surrounding targets will as well so it's really really powerful this crits incredibly high and is really easy to apply also easy to acquire because you can get it in overland or just buy it off the market you also want your jewelry to be venomous as well and you want it to be bloodthirsty on all three with weapon damage on all three now the other set of course is Reliquin. If you don't have the perfected version, don't worry, you're only going to lose 1k stam. The proc is still the same, the flat bonuses are still the same. You can get the normal version. If you don't have Reliquin at all, and you don't really fancy it, or you can't keep up your light attacks and you're struggling, then you want to swap this out for Pillar of Nern. That will be absolutely fine and it will give you a really easy to apply single target damage over time proc, which does actually have small area of effect application to it. The dot is single target per target, but the initial pop is the application of the dot and it can hit multiples and they can all have one single target damage over time each. It's really, really handy. It's not strictly an AoE dot, but it is an AoE burst that can apply it multiple times. So those are your options there for gear. But of course, what you can do is then mess with your monster helmet. Strictly speaking, single target, you want to go Zahn, especially since we're going to be in the face of the enemy. But... The choice is, of course, yours. There are so many different options in the game. But while this one can't crit, it can have really, really high damage. But you've got to stay close. The back bar weapon, so then twist it up into the hybrid-esque side of things. Bear in mind, by the way, the, uh, the helmet and the shoulders are both light to take advantage of some pen bonuses. We'll come back to that in the passives. The rest of it is all medium. We're using a Maelstrom F Inferno stuff on the back bar. You don't need perfected. You can use the regular one so you can get it on normal the pen bonus is nice but we're only going to get that on the back bar we're never going to get it on the front it doesn't carry over so there's no fucking point however that's up to you the point of this is to put down wall of elements increase your light attack damage 
to anyone caught inside of it. And heavy attacks, obviously. It's very, very powerful. Make sure you keep this up at 100% of the time. Do not let Wall of Elements run out. Back bar glyphs, of course, are weapon and spell damage. Front bar, flame and poison with double charged. That's really, really handy. Yes, of course, you can go Kinraz if you really, really want to. Bear in mind, of course, you are going to have to stack damage up to five stacks before this pops. And then you're going to have to maintain it. So if you're on the back bar too long, you are going to lose it. So having that Major Berserk up 100% of the time is essential for this set. You've got to maintain your rotation and you've got to make sure it doesn't fall off. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of downtime. While the damage output is nice for this and about two or three K higher than Venomous, just bear in mind, of course, you cannot take a Major Berserk buff from anybody else because it doesn't stack. However, while this is about two or three K less, you can take a Major Berserk synergy from a Sorcerer. You can take a Major Berserk buff from wherever, which means that now stacks on top. So that 3k gap is now making this stronger, as long as you maintain those synergy takes. If you don't take them, you're useless. So this one, if you're really lazy and can't take synergies, but you can manage your light attacks and back bar swaps. This one, if you want a little bit more damage at the same time as taking the synergies, or just for this consistency's sake anyway, because this one's a lot easier to apply. So there are variables to be considered, depending on which one you want to use. But this is tricky, but nice. This is simple and effective. The choice is yours. However, now we're going to get to the skills and things are going to change up a little bit because our food is going to alter and so are our situational uh, buffs and bonuses depending on which skills you choose. This is a hybrid-esque build, but we're going to change some stuff out. As you can see here, we are using the regular Blast Bones and Venomous Skull, Detonate and Siphon, all that kind of stuff. There's going to be an option to swap that out for the Flame versions. And of course, the Lightning version of the Siphon as well. So we're going to explain the skills in detail. This is going to be a little tricky for some parts, but we're going to leave that towards the end of this section. I'm going to show you what you can do to swap out stuff to make it even more hybrid-esque. But you are going to have to micromanage your resources and consider your group composition. But we'll go over the basics first. So, Blighted Blast Bones is the first ability. This is Blast Bones morphed to Blighted Blast Bones. It's called Stamina, of course, and this does disease damage on impact. Bear in mind, of course, this is area of effect. Yes, it's an instant hit. It is direct damage, but it's area of effect direct damage. So, yes, for those of you out there wondering, can you put a lightning staff and get more damage out of it? Technically, yes, but the way we're set up, the daggers are doing more for us. But um, this is area of effect, so it will hit multiple targets. Basically, you hit it while aiming at a target. You must have a target to fire it, and it will summon a skeleton. After 2.5 seconds, it will dive at the target and explode. During its lifetime, you cannot cast another one. It will be grayed out. Now, to get that timing perfect, so you can always use one, hit Blast Bones, then you want a Light Attack skill, Light Attack skill, Blast Bones again. Light Attack skill, Light Attack skill, Blast Bones again. Obviously, always use a light attack before the blast bones. Because there's global cooldowns with skills, because there's global cooldowns with light attacks and heavy attacks, and because this has a cooldown as well, that combination of skills will give you the exact timing to constantly keep this running. So in our rotation, we will have some of that. You don't have to overcomplicate your own rotations too much. I'm trying to figure it out. This is done for you. But if you do want to figure out your own, then of course, that's the rhythm that you have to keep up. Light Blast Bones, Light Skill, Light Skill, Light Blast Bones, Light Skill, Light Skill. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Now, I am going to tell you how you can use the other version of this later. We'll save the complications for after all this stuff. Barb Trap, of course, is in the Fighter's Guild skill line. You do want to get this as soon as possible. It will give you a crit damage bonus when it is activated for the full duration of the skill, increasing your crit damage by 10%, so minor force there. And, of course, the target that it hits will be hit initially with bleed damage, just a single hit, and then a constant damage over time bleed damage. I know most people think bleed equals damage over time. It doesn't. This has got two versions of a bleed. One is insta-hit, the other is damage over time. What a bleed does now is it can apply hemorrhage if you've got good status effect chances or you just get lucky. Hemorrhage can apply minor mangle, which will reduce the target's health by 10% during its uptime. That can't be done to bosses or elite enemies, but it can be done to everything else. Put this on the ground, under the target, pop, damage over time, crit damage bonus for you. Perfect. Don't let it run out. Detonate and Siphon is very, very simple. This is in uh, Gravelord skill line. It's the second ability you unlock. Oh, it's not. It's the last ability you unlock. Damas. Second one is Blast Bones. I did forget something here, by the way. That creates a corpse when it blows up. That's important. Anyway, Detonate and Siphon. Starts off as Shocking Siphon. Morph it to Detonating. 
technically the other one is very very similar the application's the same the damage output is the same but it doesn't have the pop at the end it has resource gain instead that's for magicka by the way magicka resources that's relevant later but that's the difference between the two because of the scaling of stats now even though we're spec into weapon damage and stamina the magical version of it still does the same damage but we want it for the pop this is free you consume a corpse it does damage over time to surrounding targets and any targets caught in the beam that it applies and at the same time whenever it runs out or you reapply it goes bang this will also increase all of your damage done by three percent while you are on this bar so basically as long as there's a corpse on the ground you can always have this running it doesn't cost anything so don't mess it up got to have a body could be a player body could be an enemy body could be your blast bones as long as there's a body this will work venom skull is technically a spammable but we're not technically using it as a spammable we're using it as a filler so whenever blast bones is grayed we're going to fill it with other skills generally venom skull and of course detonating siphon so we are going to use this a lot but it's not going to be used every single cast just bear in mind of course every cast that you do cast from this particular ability or other grave lord skills will count towards the third hit every third cast will be 20 percent stronger so if you cast this then this then this it's the third hit if you cast this three times it will count as a third hit or if you cast this and then this twice the third hit whatever you do on this bar basically you're always going to maintain that you don't have to be too um precise on how you apply the third hit every time it's just going to do it by default based on the rotation that i'm going to give you but just bear in mind that's how it works it's really really powerful it is quite uh cheap as well so your resources will be fine next is camouflage hunter now bear in mind of course this isn't a fighter's guild ability uh skill line so you are gonna have to unlock this of course but basically if you're flanking the target and you crit which you will you will get minor berserk basically for five seconds but you can keep that up consistently if you're in front of a dragon obviously that's useless but we are going to benefit from fighter's guild passes for having this here and of course if you're not using shiny pots if you're using tripods which you can do then of course you've got major savagery and prophecy already on your bar you just leave it there you don't even have to activate this skill ever and of course that does mean that if you are uh in a group with a dragon knight who is giving the group sorcery and, and brutality again try pots all day long you have the two major bonuses you need you don't need special pots however for the build if you're not got that in your group definitely do use the shiny ones flawless Stormbreaker is on the bar for passives but if you do activate it of course you do physical damage in area of effect plus you do damage over time to each target affected and you will increase your weapon and spell damage by 300 for 20 seconds really nice during execute if you don't have enough ultimate for your back bar one but essentially just leave it on the bar for passives we'll come to the passives in a bit back bar again camouflage hunter you can put on both bars so you've got the bonus both times but you can change this out if you want you can change it out for necrotic potency which means anytime you basically activate this you will scoop up ultimate from dead bodies each one will give you six ultimate and you can do this up to 36 ulti at a time which is a bit nuts so if it's 12 targets on the ground you can activate it twice so you'll get 72 ulti but each target that you basically consume will give you two seconds of healing over time just bear in mind of course if you reactivate this it will give you the new benefit not the old one so if you suck up six corpses you've got 12 seconds worth of healing over time if you activate this again and suck up three your 12 seconds have now gone down to six so play tactical with it but if you want to just spam it for ulti you are going to have so much ultimate it's ridiculous that is also an option for here if you choose to but if you want to heal even though we're using magicka and stamina stuff figure we are specced into weapon and spell damage. Sorry, we're specced into spa uh, weapon damage and stamina, which this generally scales off of. But since the stats have changed and you can scale off your highest resources or your highest offensive stats, if you went spell damage and magicka, this would still do the same amount. So you can use this on anything. But if you want to, you can slot that instead. Anyway, now that we can go, we've gone slightly over the stats, saying that they consider your highest offensive stats that will now make this skill make sense wall of elements in the past was very very nice but it would scale off of spell damage and magicka now it scales off of your highest so we can use it as a stamina or hybrid build no problem whatsoever so destruction staff skill line second ability you unlock unstable wall of elements put this on the ground it will do fire damage every single second to any target caught inside of this and because of our weapon on our back bar any light attacks we do or heavy attacks we do to any of those targets will hit harder and of course bear in mind because we're using a flame staff any enemy that 
is burning will take more damage from this. When it's finished, it will explode, or when you recast it, it will explode. But that burning status effect there, the benefit from that is actually going to be really, really high for us because we do have two charged weapons. So it's really, really good. We're going to maintain that quite a lot. Blast Burns is on the back bar as well as the front bar. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but the rotation will cater for this. If you'd rather just stick to it on the front bar and just keep it nice and simple, you'll get slightly less damage, but um, it will be less complicated for you. And you can just put Detonate and Siphon on both bars for the extra damage output. That's technically just a buff to fill the slot if you're not using this. But the way the rotation is set up, the reason we've got it on both bars is so that we fill that Blast Bone skill skill, Blast Bone skill skill. We can still do that even if we're on the back bar. Again, the choice is yours. If it's too complex, just put detonating on both bars and keep your blast bones only for the front bar. That will make more sense when we get to the rotation. Skeletal Archer, of course. It's the theme here, using the whole skill line here. Skeletal Archer is from the Gravelord skill line. Starts off a Skeletal Mage, which is a magic type one. Morph it to Skeletal Archer. Yes, of course, you can still use the magic version if you want, but you're going to struggle with your resources. And the damage type is different. This is physical damage, and it will get stronger and stronger and stronger the longer it lasts basically so this will be used throughout our whole rotation it will never run out don't try and recast this too early obviously because the damage will reset don't let him die though uh avid boneyard same skill line this again used to scale off of spell damage and magicka now it doesn't it scales off your highest offensive stats so for us even though we're specced into stam and weapon damage this is exactly the same as it would be for a mag build put this on the ground there's loads of ice damage over time and of course it's area of effect frost damage as well so you can apply chilled status effects which is quite nice because it will make them do less damage to the targets around you we're not holding ice stuff so we won't get brittle from it but that's not really relevant for us but if you take a synergy from this which will consume a corpse obviously then the ability will do 50 percent more damage and it will also burst do an uh frost damage and error of effect as well so yes you can take your own synergy keep this up 100 percent of the time as well as wall of elements and the rest is nice and simple Shooting Star. Yes, you're going to have to get Mage's Guild. Do you have to use this? No, you could use a Death Royalty. Do I recommend you use this? 100% yes. Get this skill. I don't know when they're going to change this or why they haven't done already, but it is quite frankly broken as fuck. It has a really cheap ulti cost. You get 12 ultimate back for every single enemy hit by the initial hit. So yes, that does mean if there's 20 enemies in there, you do get basically all of your resources back and you can cast it again. And it does massive uh, flame damage over time on the ground, which, yes, we can apply more burning because of our charge. And it does a flame damage initial hit and knock down and stun and all that good stuff. It's mental. Cheap-ish, hard-hitting, single target, air of effect, damage over time, fire, and ulti back. It's nuts. Use this as much as you can. In the past, I've said not to use it because, obviously, some other things on some of my builds did generally outperform this skill at the moment is in a crazy place 12 ulti is way too much per hit in my opinion and 200 ultimate cost based on how much ultimate you get back is cheap as hell so while it's not being nerfed to the ground which i think it probably should do we don't want it to happen but it, sh it should for balance sake obviously while this is in its state that it is bloody use it absolutely mental get major skill 10 unlock meteor more for the shooting star Big trash pulls or single target, it doesn't matter. You're going to benefit nonetheless. And also, don't forget, if we use our um, Necrotic Potency, we get an ulti back from that as well. It's bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Now, the swap out stuff to make things really complicated. So, this is a hybrid build. You can maintain your Magicka abilities and you can maintain your Stamina abilities, especially since some of these are cheaper upon cast of a previous one. That's coming in the passives, don't worry. But if you have really high Magic Resource uh recovery in your group so symphony of blades uh masters staves from resto staves um perhaps you've got hollow fang constantly firing in your group maybe someone's been nice and actually used the luminous spear version of the blazing spear in the templar skill line so that now instead of getting your highest resource back you get both maybe someone's brought brutality and sorcery so you can use tripods so you've got your recovery there if that all works in your favor and you've got that on tap you can get more damage out of this and what you can do is you can change blast bones to the other version you can change it to the magical morph that will give you technically the same damage output on on paper but if you bring dragon light buffs to increase flame damage if you bring incratis to increase flame damage you will get more out of it 
So while those buffs and bonuses are present, while you've got those recovery bonuses present, you will get more damage from the other morph. If none of those are present, don't bother. You're going to run out of resources. But if you can, it's really, really good. You'll end up doing about 10k more damage per blast bones, which is substantial when you're talking... Let's call it end game figures. If you want to increase your ceiling, that's the way to do it. But it does involve clever group composition to allow you to apply that. Also, if you are stuck or you're almost there, but you don't have quite the recovery, you can go squishy and you can change to this food, which will give you a stam increase, obviously promoting our highest resources for more damage. But at the same time, you'll get magical recovery. There is a negative to this. You will lose a lot of health. Granted, in a trial situation, if you've got Eben and a Warden buff for a minor, minor toughness, you can still sit around 24, 25k health. But if that's uncomfortable for you, then, of course, stick to the basics. The choice, however, is yours. That will be in the written guide if that's confusing, but that's a swap out if you choose to. Anyway, passives. So, this is quite simple. When you use Blast Bone, Skeletal Mage, Spirit Mender, or anything like that, when they die... So this is any of your pets, basically. Or when you recast them, they will leave a corpse on the ground, which is really, really handy. However, they also have another benefit. When that happens, whether they leave a corpse or not, the next cast is 50% cheaper. So if you use a Blast Bones, your pet is cheaper next time. If you use a pet, your Blast Bones is cheaper next time. And we are using these consistently. We are never going to have the full cost, ever. So it's always going to be cheaper. And that's why if you've got good recovery in your group and you do swap this for the other version, you can still maintain it because you're not being charged 2k a cast. You're not being charged 3k a cast here. It's always half. Easy to sustain. And since our abilities are a mixture between Magicka and Stamina costs, that also helps us with our Stam resources. But half the cost helps us even more. Very, very awesome skill there. I do think it's a little bit overpowered, but... It's there. Make sure you get that passive as soon as humanly possible. You won't struggle with resources again. Uh, increases your critical strike chance against enemies while under 25% health by 4% each. This was gutted a long time ago. It used to be 10% per uh, skill on your bar. Now it's 4. This will give you increased physical and spell pen based on having an, a Grave Lord ability active. So basically all we need to have is detonate and siphon or your pet running. And you'll get that pen bonus. So that's why at the beginning you saw I had 2.5k pen. We actually have 4. Also here, increases your damage done with damage over time effects by 15%. We have the strongest bonus to damage over time abilities in the game for any class. The Dragon Knight technically has the strongest single target damage over time ability, but this passive is the strongest for all other skills that aren't DK skills. It's really, really strong. If they ever introduce a mix class feature in the game, this with a DK would be disgusting. Anyway, that's a uh, bit boring about stuff we don't need to talk about today. Anyway, uh, this is actually quite important. When you have a Bone Tyrant ability slot, uh, slotted, so our back bar, Necrotic Potency maybe, and enemy dies, you'll get resources back. So while this is on the back bar, if anything in the room dies, you'll get stuff back. But for us on the front bar, we don't have anything, so it's, it's hit and miss. You can take this if you want to. Reduce the damage you take from damage over time abilities while you have a Bone Tyrant ability active. So again, if this is active at the time, while you're getting your heal over time from this, you can benefit from that buff. But again, we're not using it on the front bar. We're not using any active ability. So that, again, is hit and miss. If you do use the skills, great. It's going to help you a lot. If you're not, then dump it. Uh, increases your healing receive with each bone torrent ability slotted. Again, back bar stuff. If we have it on there and we stay on the back bar, great. If we don't, then we don't. And of course, this increases your max health. So these are situational for us based on the way the build is constructed. But this one is one that is set in stone. You don't need any other bonuses for it. You just put it on and you have extra health. It's great. Living death is... Well, we're not using any of these skills at all, actually. None. If you want to, you can, but we're not. So while you have a negative effect on you, your healing done is increased by 8%. That is important. You don't need a skill from the skill line for this. So get that. While you have a living death ability slotted, not relevant. We don't have one. When you use an ability on a corpse, very relevant, you will get 10 ultimate back, and this can happen once every 16 seconds. Also, while you have a Blast Bone, Skeletal Mage, or Spirit Mender active, your health and magical recovery and stamina recovery are increased by 200. Again, you don't need to have any of these slotted. You just need to have those abilities active at the time, so your pet will do that for you. So while our recovery looks quite low and our pen looks quite low, basically all you need to do is have a pet running, and you can see here that our recovery just went up across the board, and so did our pen. Easy peasy. 
Now, we are using a dual wield, but we aren't using any dual wield abilities apart from the light and heavy attack. So just bear in mind, this one is useless. This reduces your cost. We don't need that. But the rest you do. This will increase your damage with dual wield abilities against low health targets. Remember, low health, we do have a crit bonus. But, again, low health, we do more damage. So that's going to stack on top of each other. This increases your weapon and spell damage of your offhand, which is really handy. This will give you a damage bonus against CC targets with your lights and heavies. And this will give you a benefit regardless, depending on which weapon type you're using. So, of course, lots of different variations have been tested. But this particular build did better with two daggers. But if you do have really good RNG and you crit a lot, then two swords, for you, maybe just lucky, would potentially do more flat damage. The trick is balancing that out. And the two daggers for us did actually work out. You can get more damage if you're lucky from the swords. It is your choice, but for consistency's sake, the average was high with double daggers. Each dagger gave us 8-12 crit, which was really handy. Now, we're using a Destro Staff on the back bar, so you are going to want these passives. This will give you a stronger heavy attack with a Flame Staff. We're not going to be heavy attacking that often, obviously, because we have got our recovery kind of maintained within our own setup. But just in case you do, that's a benefit. This will increase your pen versus spell resistance of the enemy for Destro staff abilities only. So your wall of elements and light attacks and heavy attacks are affected, but only while we're holding the staff. This will increase your chance to apply status effect while on the back bar. Bear in mind, of course, we've got a higher status effect on the front bar anyway, but this is nice just to have there while we're doing our back bar stuff. While using a flame staff, your single target abilities will hit harder. So your light attacks, any single target hits that we, we don't really have on the back bar, actually it's all air effect but anything single target will be increased. So again, we're not really benefiting massively from the Flame Staff's benefits apart from what the Wall of Elements does if things go burning. And of course, when you kill an enemy with a Destro Staff ability, Light, Heavy, or the Wall of Elements itself, you will get Magicka back. Just bear in mind, all of these require you to be holding the Staff. So if you're not on your back bar, you won't benefit from them. The only one that's really going to give us a big boost to anything would be the few Light Attacks that you get on the back with the uh, single target hits and potentially reliquin could go up slightly while you're on the back bar but again as soon as you switch to the front you've got your crit chance and that's where your real damage starts coming out anyway so these are all slightly beneficial to us it doesn't make sense to not get them if you've got the spare skill points but if you don't have the spare skill points it's not the end of the world if you don't have them as long as you do have wall of elements down and you don't hang around on the back bar too long we are using light and medium armor you want 5 medium to make sure that you've got the weapon and spell damage and crit damage bonuses. And of course, your reduction to cost for dodge roll and skills and all that good stuff. You do want to get every single one of these apart from perhaps a sneak one. That's a choice. But again, these are based on per piece. So we've got 5. So we've got 5 pieces worth of bonuses. Why we've taken 2 light pieces is because the light pieces also give us benefits as well. While they give us reduction to cost to magic or abilities and recovery... Uh, for Magicka as well. They do also reduce the effectiveness of snares. They reduce the cost of sprint, which also helps with our stamina resources as well. And above all, this does increase your pen. It does give you a crit chance bonus, but it's tiny. But it does increase your penetration. So our penetration, our physical and spell, is affected by wearing those two light pieces, which does mean capping out in a group situation is very, very easy alongside of our necromancer abilities or passives. If we didn't have the two light, Yes, of course, we could maintain our stamina resources all day, but we already can. Yes, of course, we get more weapon and spell damage, but we'd lose the pen. We'd have to fill the gap somewhere. This is already done for you. So two light, five medium, job done. Now, we are going to obviously take advantage of Fighter's Guild and Mage's Guild abilities. These are very important. This will reduce the cost of your beast trap, so get that. This will increase your weapon and spell damage for each ability on your bar. So that's really, really handy. As you can see on the front bar, we've actually got three. So we've got a 9% increase to weapon and spell damage. The ultimate does count as one, so that's why it's there. If you kill an enemy while on this bar, or while having a Fighter's Guild ability slotted, whether it's front or back bar, you will get three ultimate back. Alongside the 10 ultimate every 16 seconds for using a corpse. Alongside Necrotic Potency if you were to use it. Alongside Shooting Star if you hit loads of enemies. Our ulti regen is out the nose. Just make sure you're killing stuff. Fighter's Guild abilities do more damage to um, vampires and werewolves. But, of course... That is a situational bonus. Get it if you've got the sp spare skill points, but you're not always going to be against vampires and werewolves. It's just nice to have. Major's Guild, of course, you are going to want this. Now, 
getting the cost down is irrelevant really um we're not using many major guild skills at all we're just using the ultimate but if you've got the passive bonuses or you've got the extra skill points go for this because you never know when you might use other stuff but of course this increases the duration that is important for the ulti this increases your recovery and magicka amount which is quite nice while on the back bar it's not essential but it does benefit you and this is quite helpful if you activate any major guild skills then of course you get in power you can get in power from your group members but of course having it there is still helpful above all the biggest bonus here is this one which is the duration because this does have damage over time on it and you want to make sure that's extended it's a very very powerful skill make sure you use it as much as you can undaunted of course if you take a synergy you get four percent resources back across the board don't be a doofus pick up your synergies also because we're using two types of armor we get two bonuses to all magicka stamina and health so we've got a four percent bonus across the board yes of course if you put a heavy piece on you would get six percent across the board but now you're lacking pen and crit chance and all that good stuff for taking off one of your light pieces uh, we are an orc. You can use any race you like. Khajiit was quite nice, although less DPS, but really good recovery. Other races were all up and down. They would lose one part and gain another. It really is up to you. There's no right or wrong, but flat damage output, the orc did really, really well, plus benefited from some nice passive bonuses. So he does have a nice max stamina bonus, which is contributing towards our damage output. He does have an extra health bonus, and we can heal once every four seconds for doing damage, and it can crit. The health bonus stacks on top of the necro bonus, so we've got loads and loads of, loads of health there. And also weapon and spell damage bonus and reduces the cost of sprint and we're fast as well. The three bonuses combined are very, very nice for us. It worked out great, but the choice is yours. You don't have to use an orc if you don't want to, but just understand what you will lose or gain if you swap the race. Medicinal use is incredibly important. Whether you're using weapon pots, which we are, or tripods, if you've got brutality on your group already, you are going to want this passive. There is an alchemy guide on my... Um, channel also if you go to the website under guides look for alchemy guide it's there it tells you exactly how to get this all leveled up to 50 in like two minutes flat but you don't have to keep your skill points in here push it all the way to 50 dump your skill points put them into here this will make your potions last 47 seconds the cooldown is 45 if you don't have this bonus they last 35 seconds you got a 10 second gap you're gonna suffer don't leave home about it fantastic skill now we are going to go into the champion points, then I'm going to explain the rotation. We've already gone over the gear anyway, so that's done. So, champion points. Very simply put, all these white or yellowy kind of shiny ones here. Not those, these are blue ones. These ones here are passives. They're inevitable. Play the game, you'll level up, you'll unlock them, you'll put them in. Done. Every single role in the game is going to be able to unlock these and get them. But, the ones that are important are the ones that you unlock on the way and slot as you can see at the top there there are four blue slottables you want to aim for backstabber for increased critical damage from behind if you're not behind the target you want to go for fight and finesse instead then you want to get thermoturge for damage over time you want to get master arms for di for direct damage that also means single target and area of effect so yes blast bones and venom skull are both affected and then you want biting aura which will increase all of your area of effect damage Yes, I know lots of people go for Deadly Aim. On this build, it was less effective. The only time you want to go with Deadly Aim is if you dump this all together because you've got major brittle in your group. That's going to be inconsistent, but if you do have it, then of course you've crit damage is covered and you can go with this. The rest of the time, don't use it. Your single target abilities that we actually have is Reliquin, if you're using it, Venom Skull, and Light Attacks, and Beast Trap. Everything else, which is your Blast Bones, which is your main damage, out damage source, your... Uh, Boneyard, your Wall of Elements, your Siphon, all that stuff. It's all Air of Effect. Venomous uh, Smite, if you're using the set, that's also Air of Effect as well. All of those contribute from here rather than here. In the meantime, how do you get these nice and quick? So, simply put, 10 points into here unlocks these. So pick whichever one you want to use. 10 points in here unlocks this tree. Now you can start getting these. That's it. Aim for your four slottables first of all, then go for all the passive stuff and start increasing your survival and your extra flat resources and all that good stuff. Simple as that. Four slottables, then get the rest in your own pace. You don't have to be max champion points. You don't even need to be half if you don't want to. Just put them in there and gradually over time increase it. This one's slightly different because you don't need too many prerequisites to unlock them. In fact, this doesn't need any, so max that out. This doesn't need any, max that out. And this doesn't need any either. These three, very, very helpful across the board. Health armor and recovery in the meantime this does have a slight prerequisite you need to get 10 points into here 
actually 15 into here, then 10 points into here, then 10 points into here. Or you can max your health out, it's up to you. Then, you want to go with this. This will give you stamina back for every single kill you get. 1.5k per kill is a massive amount of stamina that's going to keep you in the fight for a long, long time. However, if you feel like your stamina resources are really high, but your Magicka is struggling, which it shouldn't be, but it might be, then of course you can go for Siphon and Spells instead. That will also help you fire out Flame Blast Bones rather than the, uh, the disease ones if you go for the other option. In the meantime, again, all the other passive ones are going to be unlocked eventually. Just play the game and put them in as and when you can. The slottables are the important ones. Green ones, these are quality of life, but I'm going to tell you what I recommend. In content, you want to get higher quality loot, get Treasure Hunter. This one here will make your food last longer, especially if you're using, if you're using expensive food. This will have a chance to not even use a potion or poison if you're using them, and this will make you run faster between fights. The rest of it, again, is all quality of life. There's no rush, there's no panic, and even if you've got nothing in this skill tree whatsoever, it won't necessarily affect you in combat at all. Now the tricky part, the rotation. So, very simple. Make sure your pet is active, and make sure your beast trap is down. Obviously, we're melee-based, so be close. Once that's on, you start on your back bar. So, we'll put down Boneyard, Light Attack, Blast Bones, Light Attack, Wall of Elements, Swap Bar. Now, that's based on the fact that our pet is already here. If our pet wasn't already here, it would be Light Attack, Boneyard, Light Attack, Blast Bones, Light Attack, Pet, Light Attack, Wall of Elements, Swap Bars. Now, I told you earlier that it's Blast Bones, Skill, Skill, Blast Bones, Skill, Skill. Technically, that's true on this build on this rotation there is a very slight gap when we get to the front one on purpose so that will give you a chance to get into the swing of things a lot easier if we overlapped it too much it would get inconsistent and there would be constant different lines of rotation to change which would stagger along the way i want to keep it consistent so i've made sure that although there will be a one uh second cast gap between the blast bones it will still be consistent dps for you now on the front bar it's very simple you cast venomous uh, venom skull once then blast bones then siphon and venom skull again then blast bones then beast trap and swap i'll show you what it looks like you'll do this actually i haven't got a corpse so we need a corpse first you would have had a corpse by now because blast bones would have gone off in fact let's make it go off so now we go to the front bar venom blast bones siphon venom blast bones beast trap swap so let's put that into order. Let's imagine we're already starting the fight. Our beast trap is down, our pet is up. Boneyard. Light blast bones. Light pet. Light wall swap. Light venom. Light blast bones. Light siphon. Light venom. Light blast bones. Light beast trap swap. Boneyard. Blast bones. Pet. Wall swap. Venom. Bones. Siphon. Venom. Bones. Trap. Boneyard. Blast Bones, Pet, Wall, Venom, Blast Bones, Siphon, Venom, Blast Bones, Trap, Swap. Never change it. Keep it the same the whole time. It should always look like this. Always be doing this. It never ever has to change. If you had Blast, Hit, Hit, Blast, Hit, it would end up staggering and it would confuse people by the way that i've done this i've made it so that your uptime and downtime on all of your skills is already covered and you will have consistent dps output both in single target and above all area of effect damage output wise obviously you are looking very bloody high it's not an unrealistic expectation of people to try and get 130k and all that kind of stuff but in content completely change your setup and have really really awkward variables to make you never do the damage or end up having a melee melee set up in a fight that has to go ranged. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have this so it's consistent throughout. So any fight that you're in, as long as you can keep up this rotation, you are looking at, with the dummy rigged situation, around 105 on average. Yeah, you can push to 110. Yes, of course, if you're inexperienced, you're going to hit somewhere between sort of 80 to 90, maybe 95. But the average should be anywhere between 100 and 105. Either way, regardless of what sets you're using. If you're using Kinraz, yes, of course you can hit that. If you're using Venomous Smite, yes, you can hit that. But bear in mind, if you are using Venomous Smite, you are now open to opportunity of gaining Major Berserk from the group on top of what you've got. So potentially that could do more. 
really easy to apply. The rotation may sound awkward to start with. Don't worry, it's written on the website as well. But once you've picked up that rhythm and you've timed everything perfectly, it's just one 10 to, 10 to 11 second rotation that never, ever has to change. Just bear in mind, of course, you will need to fire off your Ice Comet or Meteor even as soon as it is ready. Just make sure you get on the front bar nice and quick so you don't waste too much time. In combat, you are going to be able to maintain this even though you're using two Magicka abilities. But bear in mind, of course, you're going to have to make sure you're taking synergies and stuff. And if you are struggling with your Magicka resources, which you shouldn't be, you can change Detonating Siphon to shocking uh, Mystic Siphon instead. And that will constantly give you magic back. Also, again, if you've got Brutality in your group from a Dragon Knight, you can use Tripods. Your Magicka will never struggle. So, time for fashion. So, I can't pronounce this bloody helmet. Scorianite or some shit like that. Gladiator helmet. Very nice. I think you'll find this from Battlegrounds. But regardless, that is mega. There are some similar ones to that, but you want something that looks a bit Daedric-ish on his head. Uh, the chest is actually a new one. That's Annihilarch's uh, Chosen Jack. We've also got the same uh, motif for Heavy Shoulder. We also have this Dramora... How do I say that? Kynreve or Kinreve gauntlets, which are at the bottom there. They're on the signature section. We've also got Fargrave Guardian Sash, which is a light. Daedric Skirt, which is also light. And of course, um, Annihilarch's Chosen Shoes. That doesn't really matter because you can't really see the feet. But he looks mega. And of course, weapons. You've got Cold Snap Goblin Swords, two of them, because they look rather pointy and and sharp. And kind of orokai isk mixed with Daedra. They're pretty cool. And the staff, of course, this cool dragon thing is the uh, Pian... Pian Dian Star. I can't pronounce these bloody things. That one! The dragon staff. Pick that. Or, or, this isn't this isn't strictly for the build, but um, everybody knows that this staff is the best. Ebon Shadow. If you can get it cheap, get it. Don't tell anyone I told you. And, of course, the colors we're using are literally all black. Pick whatever black you like. The Cold Harbor Ash is pretty cool. The Void pitch one is very dark so you might not want to use that but anything that's just all black i haven't used any other colors but black so hopefully that helps hopefully that wasn't too boring hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach this particular build there are some swap outs if you're very experienced and very coordinated and comprised to allow for that inside your group but failing that if you want to keep it simple keep it simple the choice is yours all of this will be on the website if you're not subscribing already of course please do hit that button it is free furthermore if you want to help support outside the channel there are some links in the info section for patreon Twitter, Facebook, the website zynogaming.com. There's also a giveaway page on the website, which is free. Constant giveaways all the time. There is also uh, Instagram if you want to get involved in that. There's loads of stuff. Just Google Zynog, you'll find things. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.